Tatiana, reflecting on the basis of what's just been discussed tonight at the event uh, in terms of climate adaptation, where do you see the most critical link between gender on the one hand and climate change, food security on the other hand? It's not on the one hand and on the other hand. Uh, that's the first thing. Um, the fact is that uh, gender, climate, food security, energy security, and water security are all absolutely interlinked. Uh, and they all either get worse together or we can address them successfully and improve them together. But there is no separation of, uh, of, those, uh, of those topics because they're all absolutely inextricably interlinked. In terms of uh, your work on the guidelines for the national action plans for climate change, what is your approach in including gender aspects into these uh, the um, national um, adaptation plans need to incorporate, and that is the mandate that they have received, need to incorporate uh, gender um, sensitive data. They need to inc incorporate um, gender sensitive needs assessment, and eventually they will move forward to a gender sensitive policy. But that policy need to be based on the data gathering that is that is gathered um, and on the needs assessment. So those would be the two pillars that would then be used to uh, to help the uh, policy definition of adaptation based the gender Gender def definition based on those two um, on those two needs. Is it more a mainstreaming approach, or is it? Well, you can call it whatever you want. You can call it mainstreaming. You can call it. You know, I I, I just don't, don't like to use buzzwords because everybody uses the buzzwords, and and eventually we we either mean everything or nothing with those buzzwords. The point is, the point is that you need, if you are going to move toward policy of adaptation in developing countries, there is no doubt that you need to base that on um, the specific needs that women have in those countries and on the data that is collected for the reality of women in those countries. If you want to call that mainstreaming, you can call it mainstreaming. I prefer to go exactly to the action. Thinking of the national action plans and the guidelines, there might be some fundamental changes in countries and these development countries that will ultimately, the climate change might ultimately change the whole setup of those societies. Is there anything in terms of the guidelines that can provide some provision for that? How could how that uh, change can come about? Not that climate is going to change society, is that climate change is changing society, in particular in the least developing countries uh, and in small island states, in sub-Saharan Africa, all the countries that are the most vulnerable. This is not something in the future. This is already reality. Uh, and so in that sense, uh, we need to be thinking about two things at the same time. We need to be thinking about how do we bring down global emissions, because that is what is causing the change. And at the same time, we need to begin, and that is what the NAPs and NAPAs do, we need to begin thinking about how do we support communities, families, um, societies to adapt to all those effects that are by now already inevitable. We work here for the Secretariat of the Global Donor Platform. Do you have any suggestions for a donor network uh, with regards to contributing to promote gender aspects uh, at the juncture of climate change and food security? Yeah, I have two suggestions there. The first is that these stakeholders that you call donors do not see themselves as donors. This is not about a donation. This is about an investment that has a very high rate of return because this is the only way the future generations are going to actually become productive citizens. So this is not a donation. This is an investment in the future of this planet and of our children. Point number one. Point number two, what these investors need to um, keep front and center and where you can help them is that this is a three-part triangle. What we do to address climate is one point of the triangle. What uh, the gender sensitive um, needs and data is the other 
the point of the triangle, and water, food, and energy is the third. So you have a triangle, and all of those three are absolutely interlinked. There is nothing that you, if you're going to improve the world situation on energy, water, or food, you cannot do that without taking into account the gender aspect of water, food, and energy. And if you do those two things, then you are by definition already beginning to address climate. Conversely, you cannot address climate without necessarily addressing food, water, and energy. And if you're going to do that, you need to address the gender issue. So those three parts of the triangle are absolutely interlinked. And the quicker that we all understand that and the quicker we approach solutions from an integrated point of view, the better off we're going to be. Thank you very much. Welcome.